Hi handsome and welcome to my 7th video. Before we begin today, let me just take a moment to be sentimental because I never expected that I would get this much support in my videos, so many comments, so many likes, so many subscribers. So thank you to all of you who have decided to like, comment, subscribe, whatever. It really means a lot to me. With that out of the way, today's video is another story mode video and in this episode we are going to go on a journey through Sarendia. And boy, what a journey it is going to be. Get ready for a couple of friends. Sadly, this story does not have that much to offer and I kind of outlined this in my first episode where I said that Balanos is actually new world than Serendia, so it will be much better than Serendia will be. But let's not spoil it, let's leave that discussion for the end of the video, so stay tuned. For now, let's just go through the little story that there actually is. So the story starts us in Hyrule Pass and we move from there, but before we can enter the city proper, we need to stop at the Hyrule Mine and talk to Mr. Wormsdane, who's a dwarf, who wants us to clear some imps from the mine because they have taken over it and Hyrule is so poor, which is going to be a running theme, that they need whatever little gold there is left in the mine. Which is kind of funny because if you look at the notes, it's either copper or iron ore, so I don't know where he's getting the gold from but maybe that's the point. After we kill the imps, Mr. Wormcast tells us that we should go meet this highly important guy that he promised he would let us talk to after we help him. And it turns out to be a guard. And it's the guard who gives us actual info for someone important. And it's Bobby Lauren, who is the head of the Hydel Merchant Guild. And of course, Bobby is also not doing too well financially, so he needs us to go and extort some money from Lynch Farm, where we find a widow who is having imp problems that we need to to take money from but of course she does not give us anything because she doesn't care so she tells us to kill some imps and we do that and then after we kill the imps the black spirit talks to us to tell us that we need to kill more imps and then we climb a tower and on top of the tower we actually get one of the few interesting moments at least somewhat interesting moments when it comes to the storyline of Serendia and it's the black spirit telling us that we traded away our memories in exchange for his power but then why are we here collecting power for him if he was powerful how were we powerful before we met him because he was in history and the tutorial and why did we lose our memories after uh, Elezra backstabbed us but we also did not have them what it makes no sense it makes no sense also, we get to fight Duster back here and I don't really know why he's here or what he's doing here. The Black Spirit tells us that he's hiding here and that he wanted the power for himself, but like he just appears. What is his plan? We don't get to meet him, we don't even get anything about him. Nobody mentioned him before this, like we were here to just kill some imps like moments before. And now we get to fight the boss just because we need to fight the boss. And it's really easy too, but at least the Black Spirit tells us that we are actually much stronger now that he regained some of his powers so i guess there is at least an explanation for why he just dies in like two hits or two combos but doesn't really explain why he's there what he's doing there what are his motivations when it was in balanos sure like you could say that the structure was just you know like we needed the boss but at least the the boss had a reason to be there like for example red nose was there because he was kind of bullied right so that's why he was red nose and then the imps were chased away by the goblins they had reasons to be there and then like the entire first act of balanos was us fighting imps and finding out how to summon and kill red nose and that's what we did here we talk to some merchant guy he tells us to extort money the woman tells us that she has no money and that we need to go kill imps then we get this side quest with the black spirit just finding a tower in the middle of nowhere with some black energy and now we just get to fight the boss also to make matters even worse and more confusing after we kill dusted bag we just get another quest from the black spirit telling us to go and retrieve lady lich's wedding ring but she never mentioned one and like why does the, the black spirit even know where it is like 
not only is the dialogue kind of weird or the, the story kind of weird, but the quests are completely random. Lady Lynch wanted us to kill imps, not find her wedding ring. She never even mentioned the wedding ring. If anything, she all, all she mentioned was that her, her husband was dead and that like if nobody helps her, she's going to just fight the imps herself and maybe join her husband in death or something. She never mentioned the wedding ring. Why are we getting a wedding? Ring. Why does the black spirit know where the wedding ring is? What is going on? And then we just go back to her and she does not even mention the wedding ring again. What is going on? What is this? I thought it would be just boring, you know? I thought the story would be just whatever, just get through it, it's gonna be boring. But it's confusing. Like, it makes no sense. It's absolutely insane that this is the beginning of the story. And already it's like two different people made, not, not even two different people, like, like one person was making a video game. Not even a video game. One game was playing football and the other guy was watching a movie. And somehow they came up with quests. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> we return back to Bobby Lauren and get a choice. And I have no idea if these choices really matter. I have been told multiple things, either that they do or that they don't. So we'll just draw with one and I'm going to go with the one that focuses on the story the most, which seems to be the one with Jordine. The choice takes us first to Isabel, the head of Xi'an Merchant Guild, which is called Theonian, and she tells us to go to Grace Lauren, the former head of the Merchant Guild in Heidel, and probably someone related to Bobby Lauren. Talking to Grace does not really tell us much, other than that Jordine is doing some stuff and she doesn't know what, so she gives us a letter. We have no idea what the letter was about, and Jordine burns it anyway the moment we give it to him, and talks about some ominous plans, how he wants to start a rebellion, or just kill all Calfionians or something. It seems like Serendia is under Calfion's oppression from some prior war and Serendia seems to be very impoverished because of this. So I have to give some props to the lore, but the story leaves a lot to be desired so far. After meeting with Jordan, we go to Alejandro Farm, where they have some problem with pumpkin ghosts and we are reunited with Alustin and Orwen from Balanos and Yaz is here. I don't know who she is. She was never introduced, so that's cool. And they have like a prophecy or something about the Master of Darkness returning. And later after we talk to Orwen again in the inn, she tells us that his name is Belborn and he is worshipped by the Shadow Knights. So we need to find out more about him. But before we can do that, we need to go to Glish because they have some problems. And those problems are kind of different because when we are supposed to go there it looks like they have a problem with monsters when we get there they have an issue with nagas and they want us to kill nagas so i don't know which one it is and i guess we'll never find out and we have to kill a lot of the nagas because once we are done killing them the black spirit tells us that we need to take their weapons and then when we take their weapons we need to kill the commander and then after we kill the commander the Black Spirit is like, oh, they must have a reason to be here, so let's kill the Fogan chief. So we go back to the Fogans and we kill the Fogan prince. And then the Black Spirit is like, yo, do you hear Eden? He must be fighting with the Nagas. But we are in the Fogan marsh. Eden is in the Naga territory. It's 700 meters. So I guess Black Spirit has an insanely good hearing because I very much doubt that everyone else is quiet. So sure, let's go fi find Eden and the Nagas. Mating with Eden, who's dancing with the Naga, we find another ancient device, so our Black Spirit powers up. And we learn from the Naga that they have been forced to be here by the Fogans, but we also kind of already knew this because Black Spirit in the previous quest told us to kill a Fogan Prince, so shouldn't this quest be before the last one? Wouldn't that make more sense if we learned from the Naga that the Fogans forced them here, and then we killed the Fogan Prince, not the other way around? It makes no sense once again. 
Returning to Glish, has us talking to a bunch of NPCs about the old chief of Glish Donut, who wanted to drive the Fogans away, and he allegedly succumbed to the darkness. We go to the basement, we find some clues, go to the ruins of Glish, and watch a cutscene that was left there by a journal. And well, just listen to the voice acting for yourself. Save us all! Donut. So, after we return to Freharao, he's like surprised about what happened to Donut, even though he was literally there! He was there! So how, how did the journal end up there? What is it doing there? Why is it there? Who put it there? Why did nobody take it? Why did everyone leave it? Did Freharao put it there to make us remember what happened? But if he did, then why is he surprised that it was there? Do I need to say it? It makes no sense. Anyway, Alustin is here. And he's here to tell us that the monarch of darkness, Belmorn, is going to return and he requires a host whose soul is very pure. And Freherau says that that must be Jordine, because his hatred for Kelfion is very pure indeed. So this actually sets up Jordine, and we get to talk to Jordine right after this, because he's here now. And Jordine offers us to join him in the war against Kalfion. But would, wouldn't you know, it's making no sense again, coming back at you. And this time it's even worse, because right after we talk to Jordine, and he right after he offers us to join him, we don't get a choice. Instead, we get to talk to the Black Spirit, who tells us that there is no way that we would join Jordine because he is being possessed by darkness, even though it's the Black Spirit made of literal darkness. But okay, sure, Black Spirit had a change of heart, he's a goody two-shoes now, that's, that's fine. But he tells us that we need to follow him because otherwise Jordine is going to run away. Where Jordine is standing right next to us. He's right there. We could catch him. What do you mean we need to pursue him? He's here. But no, instead of actually catching him or stopping him right here, we need to go back to Grace, who is somehow here again. And instead of her telling us to go catch Jordine, we go to Bloody Monastery to uncover some of his secrets with the cultist. At this point, I just gave up. So of course, we go to the bloody monastery and talk to Annalyn, who is a cultist in disguise. And she tells us that we need to kill cultists and get their documents because they need to decrypt some documents. So we kill cultists, get documents, and after we do that, the Black Spirit tells us to rescue prisoners. So we go and rescue prisoners. And after we are done rescuing prisoners, he tells us to collect name tags from corpses of fallen soldiers and give them to Annalyn. After we are done being a good guy, since the Black Spirit needs some karma, I guess, we return to Annalyn. She tells us that she needs some time to decode the stuff, so we decide to just summon a boss and kill him. That's the, that's the quality of the storytelling here. And while we were killing Musken for no reason, Annalyn was decoding stuff and she tells us that everything that has happened so far in Serendia has been orchestrated by Jordine. So he was the one who contacted Musken and helped resurrect Xarka which we just mentioned now, he had no mentions before this, and Jordan was also behind the Fogan invasion for some reason, and now he gets a sword. So we go back to Warren, I mean Grace. But the confusion continues, because after we return to Grace, he tells us that we need to recover more secrets about Jordine, because he rose to power suspiciously young, so it must have been because of some background deals with some people, and likely this guy, Dawson, who is from Calfion, so someone Jordine hates, for no reason, by the way, we never get explained why Jordine hates Calfion, other than that Calfion won the previous war, so is he like, you know, is he like the guy from the 1940s Germany? 
you know who I mean? Is he like him? <laughs> Some kind of allegory? Let's forget about that for now, because we have bigger fish to fry. So not only did Jordan make deals with someone who he hates, we also get more contradictions in the story, because when we to get to Northwestern Gateway, where we were sent by Grace, we talk to Romano, who is the contact there, and he tells us that the reason the Glish water is contaminated which by the way nobody in English mentioned the entire time we were in English nobody even once mentioned that the water is contaminated or that they have problems with water or anything like that but that's besides the point again either way if you remember in Heidel the one cut scene was that the monsters must be causing the contamination but this guy Romano tells us that it's the Blackstone mining operation okay let's go let's add more confusion into the mix because we clearly did not have enough <laughs> after we do some tasks for Dawson we get him to arrange a meeting with Jordine and then we return to Grace who says that everything was already laid in motion so we go to the Lord of Hydel who tells us that he already told Jordine that Dawson wants to meet him and Jordine has a sword that allegedly belonged to Dawson and belongs to the Shadow Knights so he wants to get him for treason so he goes to Dawson and Dawson has a letter from the king already saying that Jordine is a traitor and he wants to arrest him but Jordan kills him but actually doesn't kill him because Dawson survives this and we talk to him after he was allegedly killed I, I, I am I, I am speechless I am speechless with just how bad this story is Let's just get through the rest of this because there's not much left. So we follow Jordine to the Shadow Tower where the Shadow Wizard Money Gang resides. We get another cutscene that I don't know who and how they managed to see but sure and Jordine is like oh no I'm having second thoughts because maybe this is not what I want but he's already too far gone so he goes there we kill some more of the Shadow Money Wizard gang they want to legalize nuclear bombs and resurrect Bill Moore the Monarch of Darkness we go to the place where it happened we see Luffy above and we talk to him and he tells us what happened and it's basically Bill Moore possessing Jordine and Jordine says that he needs an army and this is the end of Serendias story what a mess it actually was all right then that was pretty bad but let's talk about why it was bad because we need to actually understand these these reasons some of this i would excuse i would excuse the lack of voice acting i would excuse the power of voice acting that there was when there was any voice acting because that's a sign of its time and this story is kind of the oldest one in the game i would also excuse the inconsistencies with the balanos storyline because once again this is older, the Balenos has been remade, so it might have retconned anything that, that has happened here. So that's why they call us a rookie, and that's why Jordan doesn't know us at first, even though he invited us in Balenos to meet him, and that's why Yaz is never introduced to us, and so on. All of that I would understand and I can somewhat excuse. What I cannot excuse is the inconsistency within itself because I know that most people don't care about the story and I think this is exactly the reason why. I said this in my previous video on the story of Balenos and that is that the story was so terrible that people just decided to skip it entirely and just pretend like it's not there and just spam R and get through it. And honestly this has just proven me right in a way because even if you want to follow the story as it is, there is no way in hell you will be able to follow this because frankly it makes absolutely zero sense so we start with Heidel being in this poverty crisis and we do some troubleshooting for the people around us and then we are just introduced to Jordan and then we go to Glish and completely forget about Jordan for the entirety of the second egg. and then at the end of the second egg we reintroduce Jordan somehow and now he's an evil bad guy and he was possessed by the darkness which we have never seen and none of that really made any sense to us so we don't know Jordan we don't know his plans we don't know his motivations his motivations are inconsistent at best and other supporting characters are just there to be there and the entire glitch act could have been cut i think i already said enough about the glitch act 
yeah, I don't need to say much more because that made absolutely no sense. It was just an extended killing mission with some cutscenes and some talking to NPCs. But then we also have to consider that, and this is my biggest problem with the story that there is, it takes itself so seriously. There is not a single moment of brevity outside of maybe one or two moments with Yas, which honestly kind of miss. I don't like her character at all. She was in the entire story for like three lines in the first place so we don't really get to know her anyway so she really falls flat and anything else that there is is just oh we are poor oh we need money oh darkness is coming oh jordan wants to kill everyone oh there is contaminated waters oh this guy killed himself for some reason we are so so sad so so bad everything is terrible and even if the Balenos storyline kind of had this with the Velia angle right so we had like Velia was doing really poor and then we saved it at the end we still had interesting characters and funny funny characters or at least characters that were fun to be around we had the princess we had obviously Eileen we had uh, Grisha the man goblin and and the deserter from Kron Castle we still had interesting characters that were sort of funny and that work all of that is just gone it's completely gone and it was replaced with extremely serious and self-important story that is inconsistent as hell it ends on a cliffhanger as well nothing is resolved the entire storyline could have been cut we could have just started with jordine in the shadow wizard money gang place and it would have been completely the same so yeah those are my thoughts on the story i seriously hope that kalfion and medea are not going to be more of the same because this was really hard to make it just makes me so sad and i really don't want to be so negative about the story of bdo because balenos really showed me that if pearl abyss tries they can make a good story sure it will be generic but generic is good enough for mmos you don't need anything special for mmos but serendia is just there is no saving this i i really hope they manage to somehow but they need to rewrite the entire story Alright handsome, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you liked it even if it was a bit more negative. One of the reasons why I decided to make this video was to maybe disprove the idea that video story is terrible, but that does not mean that I'm going to lie and say that everything is perfect. So if there are flaws, I'm going to point them out. And if I think the story sucks, I'm going to say that as well. With that being said, I hope you like and subscribe. I'm not exactly sure when the next video is going to come out, but it's going to be something new once again, not just for this channel, but for video YouTube as a whole. So stay tuned for that. And and I hope you enjoy your grind.